Just picked up an awesome commuter car. I've had it for a couple days now and I'm loving it. It's 20 years old as of next month and it's a Gen 2 Toyota RAV4 and it's awesome. I did a review of my 4Runner a while ago and it went pretty well. I looked around on YouTube for info on this car and there really wasn't much out there. So I figured I got this thing, let's make a little video about it. This thing has no rust, it's 20 years old, the seats are minty, and I'm just blown away by the quality and how this thing's hanging in. Anyway, let's take a look at this RAV4 Gen 2. Like my 2018 Toyota 4Runner, this RAV4 was also made in Japan. I don't know if that matters or not, but we leased a 2018 RAV4. We just leased it for a short term. It was awesome, it, no problems, and they have great ratings and reviews for sure. But this guy's a bit different. All right, when going to the mountains, you have to obviously be prepared if you get stuck or um, in this case, the engine blows up or something. It's a beater, right? I don't know what's, how it's gonna go. I've got no cell signal out there, so I wanna make sure I got everything I need, including a bunch of oil. And survival gear, I've got, uh, you know, you might have to spend the night there, not the end of the world, but it could be if you're not prepared and you don't have any, you know, warm stuff with you and food and water and, uh, a really warm coat if not a blanket and some gloves these are the best gloves on the planet and some half decent boots that'll get you out of a jam or a hike so this one is a little bit different than the uh, new RAV4s and the CRVs this one is 50 50 split uh, all-wheel drive so 50% front 50% back and there's no bias to it there's no you know that new ones are front wheel mostly and then that back end kicks in a little bit this is 50 50 split so this was compared to I had an old Lada Neva and it was all-wheel drive same as this it would just roll like this 50 front 50 back but it had um, a locking center diff and then of course high and low range uh, this doesn't have that the tires on this are oversized they're uh, BFGs all terrains so they're a bit loud at speed for sure I'm gonna change them out but um, they're taller too they're the original tires and I have the original tires for this came with it are 235 60 16s and these are 235 70 16s so these are actually two inches bigger than stock so it's given me a bit of a lift for sure the stock tire size are 27 inches these are 29 and it's noticeable it looks pretty cool actually i'm probably going to keep the same size on just um, a different tread pattern for sure snow tires definitely the plan for this is a winter commuter it's the two liter vvt i engine i think it's called and it's the first year of the timing chain it's a two liter four cylinder of course and it's got plenty of power in the five speed i got no issues with it it's fine so this is kind of our going to be our winter beater and it's got to be all-wheel drive or 4x4 where we live because the winters can get really nasty. Last year we bought a 2004 Subaru Forester. The thing was amazing in the snow. Uh, you know, I had winter tires on it too, but it was just unbelievable. They're great. I bought it with about 280,000 kilometers on it. I put about 25, actually I pushed it over 300,000. So whatever I put on, almost 30,000, I bought it with 285 or something like that. The tranny started making weird noises and then the rear CV axle went sideways. It was just welded to the wheel. I tried everything, the splines, it, it just wasn't gonna come off. I beat it silly, nothing. It's just not gonna happen. So I got rid of it and dumped it. And so that didn't even last us a year, believe it or not. I bought it in August and about three quarters of the way through the winter it died. So that was into that. So that's why we kind of got this guy. And I wanted something that we could keep. The other bonus with this guy, it's only got 241,000 kilometers. And that's pretty amazing for a 20 year old car. Um, that's about 150 miles, I guess. And I think I could probably double that. So we'll see how it goes. But as far as longevity is concerned, this thing's plastics are perfect. There's no cracks on the dash. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no rust. The interior is absolutely mint. 
and I'm just blown away. Other cool features with this car is the headroom. The headroom is crazy. I could put my cowboy hat on in here, no issues. It's probably got more headroom than my F-150s did. Definitely more than the 4Runner. This thing has got tons of headroom and lots of glass. The visibility uh, driving with this thing is crazy. It's like being in a fishbowl. It doesn't feel car-like. It does feel like a little SUV. Um, and it's tall enough, especially with these tires. I like the look of these guys with the spare tire on the back. Uh, I don't think the design is really dated. It's kind of rounded like everything is now, but um, I think it fits right in. Oh yeah, so other things to note are the five speed. The five speed tranny is pretty much bulletproof from everything I've read. They did have issues, again, this is a Gen 2, so this was from 2000 to 2005, This is, and the car I'm in is a 2001. They had issues with the ECT um, on the earlier ones like this, but that only affected the auto transmission, so I've got no issues with that. They did fix it eventually. And this being a two liter, they did come out later on, I think 2004, with a 2.4 liter with a little bit more power. So the five speed obviously is gonna hang in there a bit longer, and I did wanna look for a five speed, and I think that's why I got such a deal on this. Nobody knows how to drive a five speed anymore, so nobody even looked at this car. I scooped it up. What else can I tell you about it? Oh, and of course, with the five speed, you've got five speeds where the, the automatic only was a four speed automatic. So I've got an extra gear here, which is pretty cool. And it is a lot more fun with this five speed. I'm, I'm loving it, man. This is the last gen of RAV4 that you can get a five speed in. Um, that's what I've read anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So I thought that was pretty cool. The back seats fold up. Um, they just kind of fold up like a sandwich and really easy to, to fold up, of course. But what's really cool about them is they can just pop out. They just literally pop out right out of the car, out the side door, and you've got about 63 inches of space. Everything's working in here. This is the base model, so it doesn't have a sunroof. It, of course, has cruise control and air. I think all the vehicles come with that. Um, but this was the base. They did have a leather version with all the toys. It's funny having something this old and you don't hear any uh, rattles or squeaks or weird noises as you're driving, especially you're hitting bumps and so on. There's no, there's nothing. The body has no rust, which is amazing, and the interior is awesome, as I mentioned. But I did notice the front uh, little fender flare trim pieces are missing, and I'm wondering if that's because of the tires that were put on it. So it's got that big back door that opens up like a regular door which probably can be a pain if somebody's parked right up against the back end of your car. Um, but other than that, it's nice, it's huge, it just opens right up, and the floor height is really low. And it's got tie-down anchor points right here. It's got four of them in the back area. I forgot to mention this to this, this little uh, deal here on the back seats. You got these little hooks that pop out. So this cubby has your tire jack tools. The actual jack itself is under the front passenger seat. But these guys in here, there's tons of space, and from what I gather, this was where you would put your uh, first aid kit or whatever else, so it's kind of a cool little storage area. What's really cool about it is, and the only thing I've had to do to this car so far was, actually it was on the other side, let's see, was replace the bulb in the brake light, and it takes two seconds. You just reach in there, I don't know if you can see it, you just reach in there, turn it, quarter uh, turn, and the bulb pops right out, you put a new one in. It literally took me about maybe 15 seconds to replace the uh, stop, uh, brake light bulb. Not bad. So look at this, this is a strange finding. It has an aerial, an actual aerial. Yeah, that's weird, haven't seen one of those in a while. And check these doors out, they just close on their own. It's really weird. It's just, uh, they're just like new. Watch, check it out. It's like magic. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this helped out somebody that's interested in a little winter beater or maybe a mini overlander or something. I, again, I haven't seen a ton of stuff on the YouTubes about this generation RAV, so I thought it might be kind of cool to put it out there and see if there was any interest. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. I've still got to get my Christmas tree for the cabin. I've got lots to do. Anyway, I'm going to see how long this thing lasts me. It's obviously... Uh, Kind of a long-term review. Somebody's had this for 20 years. This is where we play hockey.